The waveforms that we see on spectral Doppler are actually a story of the blood flow. As the ventricle would contract, blood would flow through the arteries here. And if we took, take a look at the spectral Doppler tracing, there will be a brisk upstroke, seen here, because a lot of blood cells are traveling at a great velocity. It is upstroke because we, are, we have a transducer here observing the blood flow from the perspective of the artery. And for the perspective of this artery, blood flow is moving towards it, hence upstroke or above the baseline. During systole, we see a peak here that we know as peak systolic velocity. During the later part of systole, here, where there is decreased volume, there will be a decreased pressure. There will be a point when the outflow through the peripheral vessels here or peripheral resistance vessels here would exceed the volume being ejected by the heart. If this happens, there will be a closure of the aortic valve and this is called the dichrotic notch. Again, when the outflow through the peripheral vessels exceeds the volume being ejected by the heart, the pressure will be begin to decline. It is seen in spectral waveform as the dichrotic notch. It is when the aortic valve closes. And now, after this point, we are now in diastole. This decline continues throughout diastole as blood flow continues from the arteries into the microcirculation here. Arteries into the microcirculation. This shows us an example of a low resistance waveform. Note that during diastole, depicted here in blue, there is still flow from the arterioles to the capillary bed. Pressure and blood flow waveforms can be viewed as a sum of two pressures. The forward pressure waveform generated by the heart and the reverse or backward component. This backward component is due to the reflection at the site of distal resistance or what we call impedance. So the forward pressure wave here plus the reflected pressure wave here equals a pressure waveform that looks like this. Since the reflected, reflected pressure wave here is of a different direction, when we take the velocity of the reflected wave, combine it with the forward velocity wave, we're going to see something like this. Now, this waveform is a bit familiar. It looks very much like this waveform in which we have a brisk upstroke, then a downstroke, and an early diastolic flow reversal, then a forward flow. Now we know where this waveform came from. This is an example of a high resistance waveform in which we see a nice flow of blood towards the aorta and then the arteries. But during diastole here, we see a brief backward flow. Why is this backward flow present. Consider this. It's like the heart works hard to pump or drive blood up to the arterioles. But at some point, the arterioles here are saying no thank you to the blood flow being offered by the heart. This no thank you or rejection is manifested as a reflected wave which flows against the direction of the primary wave. 
This creates the diastolic flow reversal. Again, note here that the arterioles are drawn as constricted. This high resistance waveform is seen in extremities at rest, again caused by the impedance by the arterioles. So again, during rest, in a way the arterioles are saying no thank you because the muscles don't need much oxygen. It's saying that blood would be better off sent somewhere more important like the brain or the kidneys. Now, what if the patient or the person would exercise or is subjected to warming? Now, in this case, the muscles now need more flow. The arterioles would now open. And therefore, there will be a much smaller reflected wave which no longer dips here below the baseline. This type of waveform is now known as a low resistance or decreased resistance waveform. In summary, the waveforms are a transmission of the cardiac pulsations. Knowing how they are formed are necessary building blocks to help us appreciate the appearance of abnormal waveforms as in cases of vessel stenosis and increased resistance. Thank you for listening.